Welcome to Oppa Group presentation. Hope you guys are doing well. In this presentation, we will talk about our data warehouse design and the technique being used. Today's presentation will be divided into four parts. The first part is four-step design, where we will talk about how we design the facts we use. The second part will be about dimension table design, about how we carry out the dim table. And the third part is slowly changing dimension. The last part will be about cube. Starting with the first part, four-step design. The first step, step one, we define the business process as retail transaction. Step two, the grant is each individual transaction, which is sale, return, and giveaway in each receipt in a store, which means each will represent an individual transaction that occur in each receipt. In step three, we select date dim, time dim, product dim, store dim, and transaction type dim. Transaction type dim is specified as key, one for sale, two for return, and three for giveaway. To identify this transaction type, if the sale amount is equal to zero, then we mark it as giveaway. If the quantity is lower than zero, we mark it as return. Otherwise, we mark it as sale. We select three degenerated dimension, which is transaction ID, receipt ID, and sale lines. Transaction ID is used to track transaction of each product. Receipt ID helps identify the bill that the transaction is belong to. And lastly, sale line, point to the line to the product is presented on the receipt. And last step, measure. On the measure, we keep everything from sale transaction table we receive from DPMS and add to measure, which is profit per quantity and total profit. Profit per quantity specify the profit per one unit, which is calculated by subtracting price promo and cost. Total profit is basically profit per quantity multiplied by quantity in case some transaction has multiple quantity. And here is the diagram of the retail transaction fact. Moving on. For the second fact, step one, we define a business process as receiving payment because we want to analyze the payment type. Step two, the grant is an individual payment type of each receipt in a store. This is the most atomic grain to analyze payment type. Step three, we select store dim, date dim, time dim, payment type dim. We select two degenerate dimension, which is receipt ID and line num. Receipt ID help identify which receipt the payment type is referring to, and line num identify which number of payment it appear on the receipt, in case there is two payment type on the same receipt. And step four, measure. We measure payment type to tell how much money are spent on each payment type. And here's the diagram of payment and it fact. This fact is an aggregate table of the previous fact. We decided to aggregate this fact because we think it would be useful if you show the amount of each payment type on how much it is used in each store. So step two, with monthly aggregation, the grant become monthly snapshot of payment type in a store. We discard time dim in step three because we can no longer specify the time and we continue store dim and payment type dim. Lastly, the day dim is shrunken into month dim to analyze the monthly snapshot. On step four, we measure two things, the total payment amount and number purchased by payment type. Total payment amount tell us how much is paid with this specific payment type, while number purchased by payment type tell how, much, how, how many times the payment type are used in each store. And this is a diagram of the monthly snapshot of store payment. Okay. The third fact, step one, we define the business process as promotion analysis because we want to analyze the promotion. Next, we define the grade as promotion in each store. This is the more atomic grain to analyze promotion. In the third step, we select store dim, discount dim, and date dim as for our dimension table. And lastly, in step four, we select the state date of the promotion as active if the end date, if the end date is greater than today, date, and vice versa for inactive. Total discounted is for um, summation of discount amount, and the last measure is number promotion used, which is calculated by counting the number of discount code up here. And this is a promotion fact diagram. 
Lastly, we have the receive analysis fact. For the receive analysis fact, we start by first designing by naming the business process as receive analysis process. Then we assign our grain as yeast receive. We then choose time dim, store dim, tenant dim, card dim, and date dim as for our dimension table. Then we set receipt ID as the generate dimension. We should receipt ID because we want to know which receipt we are referring to in each row. The last step is choosing the measure. We choose net sale amount, earn point, retail type to be our measure. And this is a diagram of receipt analysis fact. Lastly, I want to show you the whole data warehouse together. And this is the picture of it. For easier to understand, this is the bus metric, which tells us which fact can assess which dimension. Before we end this part on four step, I would like to show you what is going on in our Visual Code Studio. And this is what's happening in our group Visual Code Studio. In order to create the data warehouse, we have divided the building block into three groups. The first group is where we load the dimension and fact table. The second group is where we do the SCD for the dimension table. And the last group is where we do the SCD for the fact table. We will come to the first group and click on the load data to dim table. We will see all the data being loaded to our dim here. If we go back and click on load data to fact table, we will see all of the data being loaded to our fact table. And moving on to SCD of the dimension, we do the SCD for card dim, product dim, tenant dim, and lastly store dim. Next, we do fact SCD for all of our facts. We tell payment type, promotion, sale transaction, and store payment. And that is all for our visual code. Okay, and for this section, we are going to tell you more about the dimension table design. So the first dim, the card dim, data of card dim are retrieved from inner joining member profile and card description on card type column of both tables. Member profile table contain most of the information of the card holder but it lacks the name of the card type. So we joined card desk table so we could show the card name in our card dim. And data of discount dim are retrieved from left joining discount master and sale discount transaction on discount code column of both table. Then we left join sales transaction on company code columns. Sales discount transaction and discount master contain most of the discount information, but it does not have the company name. So we join sales transaction to get the company name to show in our discount dim. We did this because it would be easier to see the information of the discount, whether they belong to which company name. And for payment type dim, we retrieve directly from sales payment transaction table of the original database, which we ret retrieve payment type name into payment type name column of payment type dim. And data of product dim are retrieved from inner joining product master and product hierarchy to ret retrieve each product's category level and show it on one place for easy understanding. We also inner join it with sales transaction to retrieve other additional information like vendor. Even though these information are generated after transaction, we think it would make more sense if the product didn't contain all the information related to the product. With this approach, some product might duplicate if the data of sales transaction is faulty. For example, in some row in the sales transaction table, there's two row in the same item code, receipt, transaction date. However, one of them has brand and the other doesn't. This would lead to the same product being generated twice in product team. Anyway, we decide to move on with this approach and then correct the data later. 
And next is the data of Storedim, which are retrieved directly from shop retail table of the original database. And next is the data of tenant dim, which are retrieved also directly from shop tenant table of the original database. And next is the transaction type dim, which we inserted three values into the transaction type name, which are sale, return, and giveaway. And for our last two dim, the date dim, we have many indicators for our date, such as is it a holiday, is it a weekday? Which month is it in, in both month number and month name? It can also tell week of the month and quarter and more. And for our time dim, we store time in second, minute and hour. We also have the indicator whether it is working hour or not and AM PM indicator as well. And that is, that is it for the second part. Okay, now I will talk about this slowly changing dimension. Uh, so we apply the SCD in both fact and dimension table. First, in the dimension table, we apply it to the guard dim, the product dim, the tenant dim, and the store dim. Then in the fact table, we apply SCD to all the fact table, to all the fact attribute. And next, I will explain the reason behind the SCD of each table. Okay, so first, in the card dim, we select the card number as the business key, as it is the unique indicator of each card. Then we set the address information and other information related to it as the historical attribute or the SCD tool, because we may want to use the old customer address for some sale association. And we also need to add start date and end date attribute to the card dim to track the end date of each card address. Next, in the tenant dim, we use the tenant ID as a business key because it is unique for every tenant and we set all the attribute to changing type or the SCD one because there are no reason for us to track the change of this attribute as, as they are rarely changed. So most of the change will come from correction or misspelling or miscommunication of the name. And next is the store dim. The SCD concept is similar to the tenant dim. So the store number, which is a unique indicator of each store, is used as the business key. And the store categories and store name is set as changing attribute for the same reason as the tenant dim. Okay, and lastly is the product dim. So we set the item code to be the business key because it is different for every product. And we set all the category attribute to be historical attribute. So we can see the recent category of that product and analyze its change. We also need to add new attribute to the table, which is the status attribute to track the status of the product, whether it is current or expired. If the category change the product with the old category will change status to expire and the other attribute is set to the changing attribute. And for the fact table, we set all the attribute in the fact table to fake attribute as it should not be changed. Okay, next I will talk about the cube. Our team have made two cube based on the fact table that we think is data will be used most often, which is the receipt analysis and the retail transaction fact. For the first cube, we choose to do the receipt analysis. First step, we set the hierarchy of the attribute in each dimension, including the store dim, which is the store category hierarchy containing the store category and the store name. The tenant dim, which is the tenant area hierarchy containing the area and the tenant name. The date hierarchy, which is the year, month, and day, and lastly, the time hierarchy, which is the hour, minute, and second. Next, we sum the measure in the fact table, which is the total earn point and the net sale amount.
And next, we make another cube from the retail transaction fact. Okay, first we set the hierarchy of the product DIM, which is the product category hierarchy, consisting of each category level and the item. And for the store DIM, the DIM and time DIM, the hierarchy is the same as the receipt analysis fact that I already explained. And lastly, we sum the measure in the fact table, which is the quantity, profit, net sale amount, and each type of discount for each product. Uh, the discount total amount, the discount line amount for vendor, company, and loyalty, and lastly, the discount bill amount. Next, I will show the Excel file of each cube. Okay, so this is the Excel file of the receive analysis fact cube. So, for example, if you want to see the total net sale amount uh, by each date, you can see here. And if you want to look at the tenant area and the net sale, the net sale amount of each tenant area in each year, you can choose like this. So here, for example, you can see that at the 4 p.m., the 4 p.m. mall in 2016, this is the number of the net sale mall and you can compare it to other years. And also, you can also see the store in this area and the net sale amount of each store in each year. Also, as this is a hierarchy, you can see it in each month and also in each day. Okay, so this is one example of the cube of the, the tenant cube and its hierarchy. Okay, so this is the Excel file of the retail transaction fact cube. And I will give you one example of how we can use it. So if we want to see the total profit sort by the date hierarchy and uh, if I want to see the product category and each and which category generate the most profit, you can see from this. And it's very interesting that the main fashion category generate the most profit in the overall for the overall years. And if I want to look inside the main fashion category, I can click and see. And also I can look more deeper in like the main wear category. And I want to see the casual wear and I want to see the like the, this one and see the product inside the t-shirt. I can see like each t-shirt product and its profit in each year and the total profit. And this is one of the example that we can use the Excel file generate from the cube. Okay, so we want to say thank you to Ajahn and PTA for helping us and guiding us throughout this class. And also PP from 4 Plus Consulting that provide our data and opportunity to do the real work in this course. We have learned a lot and struggled a lot throughout the project. So yeah, hope you stay safe. Yeah, and <laughs> thank you, teacher and everyone. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>